Hi everyone, I'm Catherine from CatherineSewing.com. I created this mock-up for an Edwardian era corset that I'm going to be making soon. The mock-up was to test the fit of the pattern. In this video, I'm going to be showing how I made it right from the pattern making to the sewing to trying it on to see what changes need to be made to the pattern. If you're interested in seeing how I made this, then please keep watching. Okay, so I'm using a Nora Waugh S-Bend corset pattern that I found on Google, and I'm scaling up the pattern pieces using one inch graph paper. Starting with the center front pieces, and now one of the hip panels, and now I'm doing some of the middle sections. Finally, the center back piece, and you'll notice on the right, the center back seam is actually curved, which is very unique. And the last hip panel. After adding seam allowance, I'm cutting out my pattern pieces out of my fabric. Now here I'm marking the placement of the loops of the busk on the center front piece and I pinned the placement of the loops to make sure I don't sew through that area. Now just pinning together some pieces. Here are the hip panels being pinned. And now I'm sewing the center front seam, or one half of it that is. And now I'm sewing the other half. This is the side for the busk loops. And I'm not sewing between those pins to make sure the busk loops will be able to poke out there. Sewing some more seams. And here I'm sewing some of the middle sections in the front which are long and curved and there we can see all the progress I made and I just have to pin together those last few seams. Now here you'll see a mistake I made um, in the drafting process. I drafted these two pieces on the left too short, about an inch too short, creating a gap in the bottom line of the corset. Now I'm pinning in the curved hip panels into the space allocated for them. You can see the instant shape created by those hip panels. I love those. Okay, now I'm back at my sewing machine. Here I'm sewing on the center back facing. A facing is needed here in order to create the sandwiched boning channels for the lacing at the center back. Now I'm sewing in my curved hip panel. This was a slow seam because it's so curved. And sewing one of the final seams to connect the middle sections together. Wow, and you can see the, the dramatic volume created by those hip panels. And now I'm marking the placement of the center back boning and the holes for the lacing. Now I'm inserting the loop side of the busk and marking the placement of the knobs on the other side of the busk before poking them through using my awl. And hand basting that in place. Now here I've pinned on some of the boning channels that are marked on the pattern and sewed them on. 
And on the inside, I used some boning tape to create some interior boning channels over the seams. And I decided I should add some boning tape to the curved hip seam just for the, some support without a bone added into that. And now finally, I'm just poking the lacing holes through with my awl, not bothering with eyelets for this. And lacing it with my lacing and a tapestry needle before finally inserting the boning. Okay everyone, so I finished my corset mock-up and here I am, I tried it on. First off, I'll say that I really like this corset. I love the style and the pattern of it. It's very comfortable, which is surprising considering the fact that it, it gives a very dramatic hourglass shape at the waist. There are definitely, however, things that I need to fix and change on the pattern before I make my final version of this corset. Now the most obvious thing that I saw and that you will probably see as well is that the bust line, the top of the corset, comes a bit too low. It's almost fitting more like an underbust corset. So I'm going to raise that by about an inch to an inch and a half. Also, the busk that I bought for this corset, I don't know how this happened, but I ordered a busk that is too long for the pattern. This is a 13 inch busk and I think an 11 inch busk will work better because you need to have a bit of a gap between the edge of the fabric and the end of the busk. If you don't, the busk will eventually start to poke and rub through the fabric and it will also be uncomfortable. Also though, You'll see here a mistake I made during the pattern drafting process. These two pieces here were supposed to be a part of this nice swooping V shape, but I accidentally drafted them about one inch too short. So I will fix that. And also in terms of my personal preference, I think I will bring this point up by about an inch to shorten the corset and create a more shallow, less dramatic V shape. You'll see right away that the shape of the lacing gap is this V shape, but it's supposed to be two inches all the way down. So it just should be a rectangular shape, not a V shape like this. So the reason why it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom is because the fit in the top half of the corset is good, but the fit in the bottom half of the corset is a little bit too loose. So if I remove a little width from all the pattern pieces in the bottom half, that will create a wider lacing gap in the bottom half of the corset as well. The reason that corsets are usually designed to have a gap in the back is to give you space to lace it tighter over time, but also so that you avoid having the eyelets and the bones in the center back sitting right on top of your spine. That would be pretty uncomfortable. In the case of this corset, Another benefit of having a lacing gap is to help give you that S-curve shape because I feel that if all of these spring steel bones are sitting right next to each other, they'll kind of fight against that S-curve shape that was drafted into the pattern. Other than those things, I think that's everything. So I'm going to be moving to my drawing board before I make my next corset to make those changes to the pattern pieces. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and like the video and also comment below because I'll reply to all your comments. Also check out my blog at katherinesewing.com. Okay, see you all soon.